Welcome to another episode of the weekly UAS news update. And this week is actually week 26, which means that this is six months since we've started doing these uh, weekly updates. And I'm really excited to where these are going. First thing I want to talk about this week is a follow up on remote ID. There's been a lot of comments from you and from other people that I've seen online. So I want to give you a quick update on what's going on with this. Next thing I want to talk about is this tourist that got fined $20,000, $20,000 by the FAA because he landed his drone. Guess where? Yep, the Las Vegas airport. Not a good place to be. Um, and then the third piece of news is talking about Lance. Lance just got better. There's been a few additions, so I'm going to talk about this. And then lastly, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what 800 drones put together look like uh, at night over a river, which is really cool. So let's get started. First thing this week, I want to talk about remote ID. Now, this was a big topic last week and a lot of you made comments and for the right reason. Uh, if you remember, DJI displayed a, a demonstration. Now, this is not a final product. This is just a, a proof of concept about remote ID and about the way that remote ID would work. Now, what a lot of you caught is on the fact that uh, DJI, and this is not a DJI thing, you can remove the name DJI and you can replace it by any manufacturer out there. Um, but the idea was that the location of the pilot was going to be displayed to the public potentially. Now this had a lot of you talking, rightfully so, myself included, I'm concerned about this thing. So there's been a lot of information that came out since I posted that video. and. Um, if you uh, if you read some of the comments, if you read some of the updates from DJI, then you'll find that uh, a lot of what was in that proof of concept was what could potentially be done by the app, not necessarily what is going to be adopted at the end by the government. Now, all of this relies on what the government, what the FAA is going to decide that they want to put in remote ID. And this is coming up in December. Now I'm saying it's coming up. It's not going to be approved in December. The NPRM, the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, sorry, is coming up in December. And this is your chance for a few months to submit your comments about the, the proposed rule for remote ID. Now this is how things happen and this is how the government does things before something becomes regulation and it has to go through the NPRM process. Now when that happens, I will be giving you uh, information about how you can submit your comments. I definitely invite you to submit your comment and let them know what uh, you want to see, what you don't want to see. Now, one of the clarif there are several clarifications that I want to make. The first one is the technology because I kind of explained it uh, somewhat incorrectly. Uh, part of the reason is because I was myself confused a little bit about it, but uh, the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi technology that was in there. Now, the Wi-Fi technology that DJI used for this proof of concept is, is what it is. It's going to be uh, broadcasting the signal via Wi-Fi, which means that devices that are near the aircraft will be able to pick the information from the, from the drone and get it displayed on their devices as long as they have access to the data. This is something that I understood that I misunderstood because in my head they had to use LTE network, which is not the case in this case, which is good. This is great news. I think if this technology is going to move forward, then this is kind of an easier implementation. Even if you're in the middle of nowhere, then your drone is still broadcasting that signal via Wi-Fi and the uh, entities, I'm going to call them, that can get the signal uh, will be able to do it via by, by, by catching the Wi-Fi signal. So. Um, with that being said, the other thing that I wanted to clarify is the fact that um, the, the government, the, the idea behind remote ID, some of you may be asking, what is this remote ID for and what, why do we need to have this? The idea is that they want to be able to identify drones that are flying around. And if anything happens, they also want the general public to be able to report drones. And in order to do this, then some kind of information needs to be displayed. Now. Some of the concepts that have been put out there is the fact that there could be something like a, uh, a license plate that you have on your car. Okay, you notice that somebody is speeding uh, or passing a school bus and you want to report them to the police, then you call and you give them the license plate number. Um, so somebody, some, some companies out there are saying that this is one of the way that this could happen, where the drone would be assigned uh, a, a license plate number, and then that license plate can be uh, reported to the FAA or to law enforcement. So I'm actually okay with this. I think this is uh, accountability for drone pilots. Um, I don't know if it's going to solve a whole lot of issues, but 
at least it could appease the public by knowing that whatever they're looking up in the sky, then it's something that uh, they can report if, if they don't feel comfortable about it. Um, the, the, the one issue that I have is how do people know that the drone is actually flying legally? So is this going to increase the, the, the number of encounters with uh, law enforcement officers for drone pilots because somebody thinks that the drone is, is doing something illegal when it's actually not? Some of you also made comments on the fact that law enforcement officers are not really trained on what drone pilots can and can do up in the air. So this brings up a lot of issues. So all these things are things that you need to start thinking about because at one point you're going to be allowed to comment on some of these issues and uh, you have to tell the FAA what you want them to uh, display on this app, what's going to be required, what's not going to be required. Now it doesn't look like this is going to be a voluntary program when this goes in place. Uh, all the manufacturers of every drone, that's why I said I don't want to the, point this on DJI because this is not a DJI issue. This is everyone is going to have to uh, follow the mandates, whether it's uh, an American manufacturer or, or Chinese or French or whatever it is, they're all going to have to follow the rule. So that's it. This is all I'm going to talk about for remote ID at the moment until more information comes up from the FA and the NPRM comes up and I will let you know how you can submit your comments. The next thing I want to talk about is um, this tourist and uh, this is a nice word, uh, that was fined $20,000 for landing his drone at Las Vegas airport. Now, if you guys are familiar with Las Vegas, there's a strip and right next to the strip, there is the Las Vegas airport. And um, this uh, gentleman was flying his drone, first off illegally, because you can't take off from there, especially when he did it as a hobbyist and uh, was flying in there and uh, decided that he wanted to take pictures and then lost control of the drone. It looks like it was a Phantom 3 drone, DJI Phantom 3, and the drone went rogue and started flying, apparently at 450 feet, flew over a whole bunch of uh, areas along the strip, and then eventually ended up landing at the airport, on airport property. Uh, you can actually see the video right here in the background of uh, the, the, the drone just recording because it kept recording as it was flying with the camera down and eventually just landed at the airport and uh, some airport uh, personnel found the drone and there was a registration number on it give it to the FAA. Now the registration number was not written correctly so the FAA had to do a little bit of digging. Eventually by mismatching a bunch of letters they found a match with the drone, found the owner, sent him a bunch of letters that the, uh, the drone owner did not reply to, which is mistake number one, when the FA sends you something, then you reply to them. And then the FA decided to fine him and they fined him the uh, $15,000 initially uh, for what he did. Now he broke a whole lot of their different regulation. Uh, I'm sure the, re the registration issue was in there. Uh, the fact that he flew over people, flew in an area he wasn't supposed to, flew near an airport. Uh, anyway, the list goes on and on, flew over 400 feet, and uh, he decided not to pay or not to reply to the FA or to appeal the process. You have a chance to appeal the process. It takes so long to appeal. And then after this, you're done. The, the window closes and that's what happened to him. So now he's got to pay actually with the fees have piled up. There's been uh, added interest. Now he's at $20,000 and he says that he has no way to pay for it. So um, can't say that I really feel bad. I mean, you've got to be responsible. The FA, I think, is making this kind of a... Uh, um, a poster child for people that decide that they want to do stupid things with their drones and uh, and there are consequences to it. So, And the last piece of news I want to talk about is the FAA just uh, posted an update on Lance. This is fresh actually, this just came into my inbox this afternoon. And um, Lance now has uh, new airports that have been added and you can see the full list by clicking on the link that I'm going to put in the description. But the, the biggest one was uh, Washington Dallas in, uh, in Washington, um, D.C. And also uh, they added Newark Airport. So those are two big airports that are now part of LANS. So if you live in those areas and you are below the grid, then you can go ahead and submit your request. Actually, even if you want to fly above the grid, you can still try to submit the request. Um, the other addition in there is that there's now uh, seven more LANS providers that have been approved by the FA. So if you don't like your current provider, well, you can go ahead and find a new one. Uh, I'm going to put the list right here. I have not tested any of these. I actually like my provider. Um, I use uh, Kitty Hawk and, uh, and I also use um, Skyward on the computer if I need to use that. So I'm all set. But if you're looking for a new person, a new, a new person, a new provider, then this is it. All right, let's finish with something positive. 
Um, you probably have seen this video out there. This is what 800 drones look like. Actually, it's a, it's a plane uh, shaped with 800 drones flying along in the river, and that happened in China. Now, there's a lot of diff different displays of what drones can do when they, they fly in formation like this. I just think this is something cool, really cool technology. So that came up on my feed, thought I would share it with you guys. This is it, kind of a short week this week. Uh, imp important topics, really important topics, but just keeping it short and uh, keeping you appraised on what's going on in the, the world of drones. As always, uh, please like, leave a comment, love all the comments from you guys. Uh, made a comment to someone recently and said, uh, this is actually amazing. I get to get really good interaction with you guys. And this is YouTube. And if you've been on the comment section on YouTube videos, uh, it's never like this. So uh, I love I love interacting with you guys. So keep, keep the comments coming up. I love uh, your train of thoughts. Um, if you want to get uh, certified for drone pilot as a commercial drone pilot, re uh, remote pilot part 107, uh, get a course for you, 12 and a half hours of content. It's got 250 practice questions in there. We recently came up with an app. It's a free flashcard app that has 120 cards in it that you can use to practice your knowledge. Uh, so far, we get a 99% pass rate. Um, and actually, if you, if, if by whatever reason you decide to fail the test, then we actually will pay for your test for your retake. And also we will reimburse the, the cost of the course in itself. So this is really uh, risk free for you. So if you really want to know your stuff, this is a really intense course that's going to tell you more than just what you need to know for the test. I prepare you to pass this test and also be a, a, a proficient remote pilot at the end. So that's it. You can use the coupon right here. And um, that's all I have for you this week. And I will see you guys next week. Thank <laughs> you.